Hey what's up everyone, I'm Andrew and in this video we have a 17 inch Fujitsu Siemens. And this machine was dismissed from a company as obsolete. The laptop is in a good condition, except for the display. The display sometimes is darker, sometimes normal and sometimes have a flicker and random glitches. At the first I thought that this could be the GPU, but fortunately the problem is the display. The cooling fan is also very loud, but this is very expected for such an old laptop. The laptop has AMD CPU and Nvidia GPU, and the Intel i3 sticker is just a random here. At the bottom side the screws from the covers are gone. It's very expected also, because many times when some companies are throwing away some laptops, they remove the hard disk because of the security reasons, but sometimes the other easy removable parts are taken away. And this 2 gigs of RAM is mine, that I use for testing. The laptop is surprisingly clean from the inside. Probably this machine was very little in use and simply forgotten. Anyway, we're going to clean this machine, change the thermal paste and do some small upgrades. I start by removing the cooling fan and the heatsink. There is a very little dust here and this is very rare to see on some older machines. The thermal paste is almost fully dry and one of the thermal pads is falling apart. So probably this is the reason why the cooling was very loud. The plastic with the buttons on the palm rest is a little bit tricky to remove. I used a spider stick first to unlock the plastic clamps, but I go from under the display and then carefully I release the other clamps from all around. On the keyboard we have it two screws only and basically I am done here. Now I move to the lid. Using thin tweezers carefully I remove all the rubbers. Behind these rubbers we have a screws that are holding the bezel. And for the covers to the bottom side I use scalper. I use a scalper because to avoid any damage or scratches that can cause with the tweezers. Now I can remove the screws that are holding the bezel. As well, I always sort the parts in organizers, so later will be easier to put them all together and not lose something. The bezel has a glue and I had to be careful to not break something. Also removing the bezel may sound like it's going to break, but this is very usual. To the front side there are a few more screws in the bottom corners. Now slowly I can put down the top case. From the back of the display is one large flex cable. Now from the both sides of the hinges we have more screws. The display is out, but there is a one more cable to disconnect. And this is the power cable from the display. And basically I am done with disassembling. And I put the two screws to the hinges, just an out to hold the case and to avoid any accidental damage. Well, and now I move to remove the remain thermal paste from the laptop and some dust from around. To clean the thermal paste I use cotton buds, 96% isopropyl alcohol and brushes. I mean just the standard things as always. Now to clean the rest of the motherboard I use compressed air, brushes and a vacuum cleaner. I don't need to disassemble the whole laptop because this machine is pretty clean and we have a very little dust here. On the lid to remove the dirt around the edges I use cotton buds with isopropyl alcohol. And I use soft napkins to clean the shiny reflection foil. The Intel i3 sticker originally is not from this laptop, so I decided to remove it. And here I left the Windows 7 sticker because this machine has a Windows 7 license key which is added later and I left the Nvidia GPU sticker. As final I shine up the whole case from all sides around and I have done one more cleaning. The keyboard is in a great condition, just the keys are a little bit yellowish. So on a soft napkin I put a little isopropyl alcohol and carefully I clean all the keys, 
Also here use brushes and a vacuum cleaner to remove the tiny dust from around. To the heatsink I remove the old thermal pad, which is damaged and useless. And using cotton buds and isopropyl alcohol I remove the old and dry thermal paste. Also I use compressed air to remove the dust. And basically this machine is clean and ready for the next steps. For this laptop I bought another display. And again, I cross over one more shining process. Here I use isopropyl alcohol, screen cleaner and anti-static glass cleaner. Altogether are very powerful to clean almost any display. Also this is used display. I got it for about 14 euros. It's cheaper than the new one, but sometimes these displays may come with some minor scratches. After cleaning, the display is looking almost perfect. I found a few scratches, but all of them are very unnoticeable, almost microscopic. And with this, no problem at all. Now let's assemble this laptop. And I start with the display. Carefully, I place the display between the hinges and I put back all the screws from the both sides. Now I connect the power cable and here on the bottom we have a single screw. Now let's put back the flex cable here. It's looking good. Well, and now I can put back the top case and the screws to the bottom. A little compressed air before I put a bezel just to remove the dust from around. And I can place the bezel together with the screws and all the rubber covers. After I finish with the bezel, I move to the palm rest. I mean to return the keyboard and the top plastic part with the buttons. I turn the laptop from the bottom side. And before I put the thermal paste, again I use the compressed air, just to be sure that everything is clean. Over the chipset, first I placed a new thermal pad. Over the CPU is going thermal paste, a very thin layer, well spread. And I always put a small additional drop from the paste. And this is to avoid any air bubbles that may appear later. And as well, over the GPU I placed one small dot, just to be sure that everything is well tied and stick together. And now I can mount the heatsink together with the cooling fan. Well, let's place the RAM. Here I will use the 2GB that I used for testing. And I will add a 2 gigabytes more. So in total, we have a 4 gigabytes of RAM. So here the diskette is missing. And I have to use small pads. Also, there will be no problem at all. And this is one of the cheapest ways of fixing the disk. And as disk, I will use a 256 gigs SSD. Before I place the boat covers, I had to find some screws as well. Some of the screws are about a millimeter shorter, but the width is the same, so the screws are fitting just well. And as finish, I have done one more shining up. And after all these changes, this is the final result. And the final question is, is this laptop really obsolete? So yes and no. To this machine I install a Windows 10 64-bit. I go with a 64-bit version because this machine has already Windows 7 64-bit license key. So I use the same key to activate the Windows 10. Windows 10 is working ok, it's not fast as Windows 7, but it's fine. Mostly everything is working by default. I have no problem with audio or anything. 
the NVIDIA drivers for 8600GS are available for Windows 10. Just for the Wi-Fi, I use drivers from Windows 7. Using Microsoft Word, Excel and PowerPoint, it's possible also. So this machine is good for working with some documents, doing some presentations, calculations, studying, reading books and more. The web browsing is going pretty well. 720p playback is possible. I know, this is not too much. But still good to watch some movies, videos, educational things or enjoy some favorite shows or listen to music. When you have access to the internet, you can learn almost anything and find almost anything. The gaming performance are not bad, I mean for older games. I try to play some older games like the Half-Life series, Half-Life 2 and GTA San Andreas. And these type of games are going well on this machine. So the gaming is possible, but for all games. So is this laptop obsolete? I said yes and no. It's obsolete if you want to do some video editing or play new games or do graphic design or something heavy. But from the other side is not obsolete because when you have internet access, you can learn almost anything. Learn a new skills, new stuff, literally you can find anything that you want. Well, and this is all about the Siemens laptop. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give some ideas and inspiration to back some touch in function again or do something creative. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.